ever been curious about the spark behind your favorite content creator? The journey, the challenges, and the stories that led them to the spotlight? Dive in with Giorgio Takanakis, known as Giorgio Says, and the mystical Natalie Rogers from Femme Tarot. Every week, one guest, countless stories. Let's get the conversation started. All right, welcome to our premiere episode of Creating the Creator. I am so excited. Natalie is my co-host, and we are so thrilled to be premiering this episode with two of some of the funniest ladies in the business, if I do say so myself. You may know them from the People's Couch. That's where I first met them. Um, Julie and Brandy are on the show today and we had a hoot of a time. So I am so excited to premiere this episode with Natalie. What did you think of this episode? You were fangirling. I was fangirling I inside. Okay. I was trying to keep my cool being an Aquarius, <laughs> <laughs> but they were so lovely. They were, it was so so fun it was just like talking to friends and mm -hmm. hanging out I think you were, you're gonna love it and you're gonna love because stuff about Jeff Lewis and the serious stuff came up so you really want to have a listen and see what they have to say about the whole drama that unfolded a month ago so well it, it was definitely juicy I was not expecting them to to actually go there but they did they were open yeah yeah they mm -hmm. were very open and they were so easy to talk to they're so down to earth so nice um but without further ado guys I present you our conversation with Julie and Brandy and Brandy who are in the house and we're so grateful and excited for you ladies to join us today but shall we start with the icebreaker questions and um, you can answer whoever wants to go first can go first it's up to you so the first question being if your life had a theme song what would it be and why <sighs> oh my god tough one huh that is a tough that one is. since we love Oh, yeah we love music music um i mean that's like like saying i love dogs that's, that's true point. that is true like i love animals <laughs> i love jennifer <laughs> aniston <laughs> yeah. like I why love, is jennifer aniston so charming so i love tv yeah. <laughs> um okay mm. if you're like how about if your our life right now had a theme okay song? yeah like, i mean presently. it would probably have to be a duet uh-huh you know what uh -huh. what the song that we always come back to and um we've even changed the lyrics and made it our own is um we're moving on up oh right yeah the <laughs> jefferson theme song um yeah moving on up no, yeah, yeah moving on up to the east side moving <laughs> on up we finally got a piece of the pack mm -mm. yeah that one yeah, yeah. Say that. we're never say really that. moving up but we always <laughs> want to be right yeah manifest manifest it manifest yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. manifest beans don't burn in the kitchen <laughs> Or like that. <laughs> oh, on the grill. Yeah. Just you know, words to live by. Yeah. Words to live by. Do you know that? I mean, you're are you Australian, Natalie? I get that a lot. I'm not. I'm half British, half Greek. Oh, okay. So you I, know I love the, the pause. Jefferson. You were both like, uh <laughs> so yeah. pause there we were nice, like Greek nice from Greece combo. or just Greek. Like Greek from Greece here in America. Okay. Wow. wow. Georgia is well, Georgia is Greek too. But from America, you know, he's Greek American, <laughs> yeah. Greek American. Right. That's why it made it gave us pause. Right. Oh God, that means you guys like are gonna always have good. You're skin. gonna be like thinking of Jennifer Aniston. We hate Greek people. They're so hot. <laughs> they never age. So annoying. I um. They I just that. Have you guys seen that that filter that makes you look old? Yeah. Or I whatever. will not. I uh, know. No. <laughs> no. Yes, but you no. won't do it. Do Absolutely not, not. Do not do it. I mean it. Do no. not do it. It's that so a, scary. It's awful. Whoever came up no. with that idea. Exactly. I ran into it like on Instagram or to Twitter, <laughs> yeah. whatever. And I was like, no, no, that's no. as bad as seeing like, like animal abuse to me. 
I don't want to look at that. <laughs> Seeing yourself old. Yeah. Uh, Just as no. bad as animal abuse. <laughs> Can't. I will not. I, d- I did the I young not. filter. I did the young filter. It did not work. It works for some people mm-hmm. where they look like some people will say, oh my God, this is exactly what it looked like when I was 15. I tried the the, the younger filter and I it did look like me with like a lot of filler. So it was, oh. it was, no, I don't do the filters. No, no, thank you. No, I- I'm with you. Absolutely not. I want to forget yesterday even happened. <laughs> <laughs> so if you had to create a national holiday, what would it be called and how would people celebrate it? Hmm. National holiday. So only for our yeah. country. What would it be called and how would people celebrate it? A national holiday. I feel like I would want to do like an anti-holiday. Okay. Because holidays okay. always make people feel really lonely. Hmm. like everybody's like over new years and it's all like a you know a humble brag or clout chase or something so it's more like like a me day you know Hmm. where you get to where you just stay at home (laughs) nobody is supposed to go anywhere you're not supposed to hang out with anyone you're not supposed to go around your family or your friends you're supposed to stay at home don't shower stay in bed watch tv like a national depressives day (laughs) Wait, didn't we have that? Like didn't we have that for two years with the pandemic? I mean, and I, we loved it. That's yes, we thrived. Yeah, we yeah, thrived. We still use COVID to avoid our families to this day. <laughs> yeah, like you know so how what? Would I was you exposed. Call it? I think National uh, Me Day. That's cute. Okay, yeah. cute. I like it. Like, oh, maybe like it's a like low birthday, day. like the op- the opposite yeah. of a birthday. Yeah, because your birthday too can make you feel yeah sad. Yeah. Oh like, yeah. Well, no one cares. That's good. You know? Man, National Me Day. That's yeah, you good. celebrate yourself. You you do what you want, just but you do it alone and you just like if you want to just relax or whatever. This I also sounds like yeah. I was just gonna say this sounds like it could also be a really good Black Mirror episode. Everyone just yes, take it's could. like a it's like that uh what's that movie? True the, the purge where it's like that one day. I was just thinking about the over. purge when you said that. <laughs> I literally was thinking in my head the purge and i thought don't say that julie don't tell them you want to do a purge where you get to go around killing people don't tell them that. that's the holiday she wants she wants revenge day I wouldn't and be- speaking but of birthdays you are- you- i was gonna ask no, you what are ahead. your signs no what are your signs since i'm into astrology I, and spiritual i'm a cancer and she's a capricorn i'm a capricorn my oh, rising interesting is- yeah my rising's gemini we both have Aquarius moons, um, and I'm on the cusp of Aquarius. We're both yeah. Aquarius. What are you guys? So you know, we're both oh, Aquarius. Cool. <laughs> and I'm this on the cusp. This that's works. cool. You guys are both Aquarius. Yeah, yes. that's very cool. I love, yeah. obviously, the last uh, quarter of the zodiac. Sagittarius, <laughs> yeah. Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces. They're obviously the best. Julie's a teenager. It's a good combo though, the two of you. So it just, uh, it makes sense. I mean, because you've been working together, you've been so close for so long. So it makes sense for a cancer, cancer and Capricorn, because there's a nice balance there. But when you girls disagree, you disagree. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah. When you disagree. When you disagree. Yeah. When you disagree, you really disagree. Like you really (laughs) get into it and it gets (laughs) It gets dark. That's true. That is true. Yes, Mm -hmm. that's true. Mm -hmm. I would say that. All right, moving on. Moving on. (laughs) Yeah. If your life were a reality TV show, what would the title be and what would the tagline be? (laughs) (laughs) Well, we've had, didn't we pitch different shows? What were they called? Oh, I don't even remember. No. That could be my the real our real yeah, the reality show. Yeah. Like I don't remember. <laughs> Probably <laughs> Julie and Brandy <laughs> keeping it real. <laughs> so dumb. Like the log Julie and Brandy, like, kill yourself. <laughs> <laughs> the log line is like getting fired, getting through it, getting on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Never making it. Yeah. Yeah. Always almost <laughs> there. Almost always there. <laughs> But not quite. That'll be it. Julie and Brandy. Almost <laughs> always there, but not quite ever. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> shitty niche. Yeah. Shitty niche. We always say like our production company is called Shitty Niche Productions because <laughs> we'll be well, we're writing partners and we write all these scripts and then we get hired to write like a Frankie Grande <laughs> YouTube show and we're like okay <laughs> fuck and like we don't get ever get any money no no matter what job we <laughs> no do no matter what it's like. You know, oh. the most popular thing we will ever have done it's like we made you know five hundred dollars on it we're like we never make money ever <laughs> and it never leads yeah. to anything so awful julie and so brandy we, dead ends yeah <laughs> honestly julie and brandy almost there but never rich <laughs> yeah yeah exactly. that's right that's yeah. right exactly. the tagline is i don't know <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. No, no, no. I don't know. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I love this question, by the way. What's the oddest thing you've ever Googled late at night when you couldn't sleep? <laughs> you can check your history if you wow. want. <laughs> the oddest thing. I know. Where's my phone? Yeah. I always have you guys seen the other two. Mm -hmm the show the mm -hmm. other two if you haven't seen it you have to watch you guys have to watch it it's on hbo like max, hbo max. max or whatever oh um mm -hmm. oh my god the writers of snl and it's about this brother and sister um you know who are like in their late 20s early 30s and their little brother becomes like a youtube star his name's chase dreams and he becomes this huge youtube <laughs> sensation and the brother's an actor in new york and the sister is like a former ballerina and they're like the other two it's so funny i'm oh. telling you this oh. question reminds me of um the brother his name is carrie he's gay and he's like jerking off to his roommate in the other room and <laughs> then right when he's done he like looks out the window and then he goes on his phone and googles lisa vanderpump's age like what is lisa vanderpump's <laughs> age and it's so funny and like and i'm telling you, you guys have to watch the show it will change your life it's so like you'll watch the Definitely whole thing will like, i'm yeah. binging hilarious. tonight yeah yes. same so hilarious and you will yeah. you'll watch the whole thing and you'll die. that's so funny you'll yeah die. like that's the kind of shit like if i can't sleep i i'll just be it even if i don't go on google in my head i'll be like okay i'm gonna just think about every annoying photo i ever saw of like courtney kardashian and like travis barker and be like okay what well, okay they were straddling on the boat i'll just go through it or i'll be like chloe and lamar i just it's and it's just so soothing i mean that's the kardashians have done a lot for my like nighttime panics i'll just be like i'm gonna uh, think about chloe too. and lamar yeah yeah i'm sure julie's is gonna be star trek related <laughs> is it are you a trekkie kind of yeah <laughs> Um, is that what they're called? Yeah. yeah. I mean, Trekkies? I'm not that deep. Oh, I yeah, never heard that. Kind of, yeah, Trek. Right. Um, <laughs> I will, first, I go, I will watch Star Trek late at night to be soothing to me. And then I will start to Google. If I Google anything that, if that, if I can't, if that doesn't do it, sci-fi, fantasy related shit, like Harry Potter, blah, 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 kid stuff, animated things. If that doesn't do it and I'm still like in my head, I will look on YouTube for special effects makeup videos. <laughs> I love those. Oh. I am obsessed. Have you or ever history. watched Glow Up? Have you ever watched uh, Glow Up? You know, Up I tried on watching. I did. You know, I saw that it was on Netflix, and I kept going mm -hmm. by it because I thought it was going to be like fashion makeup, which I'm not particularly no. interested in. But then I saw like a still or whatever, and I was like, "Hello, is that a lizard?" face <laughs> on someone's face yes and i'm i might go and check that out yeah mm -hmm. i just binge watched it yesterday like i started the day before i finished it yesterday it's so good especially if you like special effects makeup yes. because they don't just do beauty stuff like they do they're they're real talents okay i'm gonna go. i love I'm gonna it do that. i got it. I have okay. all these shows Definitely. to watch now we're all so like, busy we're gonna, we're gonna be busy, busy. So busy. Yeah. Oh, the other thing is by the way i will also look on youtube and be like um, during the French Revolution, when was I'll get into like a weird history thing too. It's uh, I went yeah. down an alien rabbit hole a few weeks ago. Aliens are good. It's like all these people are coming out left and right recently. So I'm like, oh my god. Oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Everyone has seen the UFOs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's good. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you had a personal theme song that played every time you entered a room, what would it be? Can you imagine that? Every time you entered a room, you would have wow. like lights and music come on? No. 
<laughs> Could you imagine if multiple people were walking wow. into a every room time? Together? Yeah, now we're like, oh god, oh god, no, oh, no. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that would make a great film, though. It would. <laughs> Again, a black mirror, dark mirror, black mirror. Exactly. Yeah. Black, Lots of black mirror. mirror. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I walk in a room and what song plays? I mean, in a way, you kind of want like the Facts of Life theme song yeah. to play. Or take like, the good, you take the bad, yeah. you take the most. I was thinking like Succession theme song, maybe. Oh, that's good. Depends on the mood. It does depend on the Yeah, because where True. are you going? Yeah. I'm going to walk in. We're the writing doctor. the scene now. Right. You know? Yeah. Because what if you have to go to a funeral? You're going to walk in and be like, take the good, you take the bad. Yeah. Or <laughs> the facts of life. Honestly, that's probably good for a funeral. Right. Oh, that's true. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go with facts true. of life. That's good. We're like stuck on TV theme songs. I love a TV theme song. But all Same. good TV theme songs. I love a good TV theme song. Oh, my God. There's so many good. Like, the 80s had the best ones, period. MASH. MASH is my favorite. MASH the is 80s great. MASH. Because yeah. they were all depressing, kind of. Depressing. Yeah, what? they were like. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, like, like, Ab, Ab Fab like, is really depressing, too. Mm -hmm. That's Everyone's, like, smoking a lot oh, of cigarettes and drinking beer and just pissed off. Like, remember, like, Roseanne. Yeah. Like, it was the same. Like, Roseanne. Fuck yeah. life. Like, Roseanne, give me a yeah. Time, yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. That's good. Yeah. There were, those were the times. And finally, if you could have any animal as a sidekick, which one would you choose and what would the name be? The super name, superhero name, actually. Now, that's oh, an interesting question. Did you say oh, sidekick? No, sidekick. Side, sidekick. Oh, I like an animal sidekick. This is an of... interesting question. I've thought about it a lot, mainly because I'm also a fan of the Golden Compass trilogy. If you haven't read it, mm -hmm. this, do you know what I'm speaking of? It yeah. Was of it. Shit or whatever. But in the basically saying that we're all born with an animal that is connected to us. So what would that be? Like literally connected physically. So what would that be? And I've thought about it all the time, but the animal always changes because I get yeah. obsessed with a different animal yeah. all the time. But if we were to have a sidekick, each of us with our own animal. I mean, I think that I mm. want that whale with the white face that you looks want little, but it's huge. The beluga. Oh, yeah. the, oh the manatee. Yeah. The manatee. The manatee. Not the manatee. Oh. But that is a cute. That is a cute. That's one. the sea cow. Mm -hmm. The blue. I believe yeah. it's the beluga okay, whale, beluga. which is the all white oh, albino with a, whale with a big bulbous head. Mm -hmm. But I thought it was little under there, and then Julie's like, "No, it's huge. <laughs> it's a whale." But it's that's face, what she said. Yeah, but yeah. its face is like oh. that, and then oh. it looks, when it looks at you from the front, it looks just looks like a little baby coming out. But no, oh, it's bigger. So I'll take no. that. I'll ride okay. around on it. All right. So you're like the beluga. All right. And what would you call it? Um, but I do have this, which is kind of like a beluga whale. <laughs> oh, 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 hi. Giving very oh, beluga oh, whale it energy. Is giving beluga energy. whale. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. That's Goose. <laughs> Look yeah. at us being like, oh, Goose. Yeah. Like, hi. He's yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. like, really, really, <laughs> really? Yeah. So I kind of uh, live this life you're describing already. With like an annoying little sidekick around, but um, maybe I call the beluga whale goose, like yeah. this one, yeah, since they're good. both white. Okay, that's good. Ooh, <laughs> nice one. All right, and that's the icebreaker question yeah. round, and then we will get into the interview part of the podcast. <laughs> da da <laughs> da da da. <laughs> well. When we started this podcast initially, we wanted to have more conversations around what brought people to where they are in their creative journeys. And yeah. you guys both really gained a lot of popularity on Bravo's People Couch. Um, but how did that shape your whole like career and influence and then eventually the decision to be where you are now with dumb gay politics? It's podcast uh, now. It's dumb yeah. gay podcast, right? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Which is an interesting part of the, our creative journey, I think, too. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that we we were writing partners uh, first for for like over a decade, maybe or almost a decade. And then we were doing different things like hosting together and doing and Julie's a stand up. We were doing some stuff together performance wise, but um, I was just more of an actor. And then 
we got people's couch which was kind of just like a commentary show on bravo and at, right after that we also hosted the vanderpump rules after show so that was kind of like us doing our hosting thing my sidekick is down here bugging chewing on this <laughs> the headphones and it's annoying <laughs> um so oh here okay so um I think that the thing about people's couch was that it sort of like solidified us as as like shit talkers or like mm. I don't want to say it you know we were just giving our opinions all day long on every single thing we saw on the show mm -hmm. so um people's couch ran for like five seasons and right up until um the 2016 election was that in 2016 mm -hmm. and <clears throat> or yeah and so it was on hiatus it, and it, it ultimately got canceled right before the election which um i think that was why i think they knew they didn't want they i think bravo could tell that that we were fucked no matter whether it was hillary or whether it was trump like you no know, they didn't want that kind of commentary on bravo and that's what people's couch oh. was it was going to seep in um so I think we were on hiatus and, and we were going to do a podcast, which, you know, whether you're, you know, you're giving your opinion, even if you're just sitting there talking about your own life, you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're giving your opinion on a podcast and Julie really wanted to do politics. So ultimately <laughs> that was just what was on <clears throat> her mind. She, she was, she didn't want to do a housewives podcast. There was a, and at that time there wasn't even, there was, 10 times more now. Yeah. But at that time, even we were just living on Bravo and we didn't want to do something that there were so many people already doing. We didn't want to do pop culture and she wanted to do politics. It was important to her. And, um, what a mistake, but, what? That, <laughs> but that was a big, important part of our journey as, <clears throat> as creators, content creators and, and as people, because I never would have, I would have just stayed with my head up my ass and buried in the sand and I would have just you know Obama was president and I didn't want to deal and I was like who you know is vice president I don't even know and um Julie wanted to do politics so we just had to and luckily I mean or unluckily Trump won <laughs> but we were already about to start a political podcast and it was like now we actually had content oh, yeah. Yeah. A, a lot, lot of content, content. Yeah. Yeah, yeah a lot of content a lot. yeah and and we dove right in and yeah. we did and I uh, yeah, I mean, I I was always straddling the line in stand up too with politics and just um, wanted to give more of an opinion or hat. It was just it felt so important to get into the conversation of what was going on and the division was already being drawn. And now, had we known then, oh how horrific everything was going to get, I don't know. I don't know what I would have would have done but at that time that's where my head was for sure and I forced Brandy to get to do the politics and then we did it it was insane it was absolutely insane and then we just got to the point this last year I feel like the conversation was more insane than the politics even though Trump is well, crazy yeah. and all that shit I think that um what we never anticipated never could have anticipated was that Facebook was going to turn into that that's and QAnon I mean. and that whole thing yep. and obviously COVID and it all just um, exploded in a way, just the discussion around politics in a way that we never were interested in even doing. Right. We got off Facebook and I was never on it, but Julie was on it. She got off in 2018 and even just us taking our fan page off of Dumb Gay Politics was really dark. There was a ton of backlash from our own like fans or listeners. Mm -hmm. They were mad we were taking the platform away, but Facebook, you know, even to this day, it's not really a place for any kind of like healthy debate, <laughs> right? You know, it's right. okay. It's okay as an echo chamber no. or, or communities that are all of like mine, they can go and, and that's probably fun and enriching for them. But in terms of like, um, Hey, I have a different opinion. It's like, you're going to be like eviscerated. Yeah, yeah. Verbally. So we're now we have a new fan page on Facebook. Um, all things Julian Brandy, which other people do. And that was one of the reasons that we stopped that we changed the podcast from dumb gay politics to the dumb gay podcast because we don't want people to, to talk politics in that fan group even though we don't run it um 
because it's just not going to lead anywhere good. And we don't really want our names mm. attached to that, to those conversations because both sides can be really, you know, not like not accommodating, not, they don't listen. There's no nuance. Right. It's just fighting. And, yeah. um, so I, I don't regret it. I mean, I feel like I learned a lot and we grew a lot as mm -hmm. people and as creators, um, in a really volatile conversation. I mean, everything became political anyway. If we were talking about housewives, it would have eventually become political. Well, that's political. the thing. The conversation that yeah. surrounds everything becomes not just political, but vo vo volatile. You can't even... Now, even if we as creators or if our humor is, you know, <clears throat> bombastic and outrageous and and I'm definitely angry, I'm an angry lesbian and I'm, I'm you know, and I, and I am. And I am, and I embrace it and I am. And I try to use that with humor and be like, I, I am aware of what I'm doing, what I'm saying, and but at the same time, trying to listen and we're having, and I've changed a lot too, I've tried to be more open because of all of this, less stringent, less attached to certain things and also more attached to certain things. <laughs> but there's no way to have like a fun conversation, even a fun debate. People are like- no, Yeah, ever. because the Wish problem is happen. that the problem is that everything gets piled on as politics, even everything. if it's social justice, yes. social justice topics, anything. It's just it's 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 tagged as politics. And right. that's when people start becoming aggressive and it becomes edgy and it becomes and it comes to the point. But we have freedom of speech. We are entitled to express our opinion whether it's political or not, just because we have right. an opinion doesn't mean it makes us politically, you know, uh, supporting one party or the other or right. one kind of, yeah, that's exactly. the problem. And I do think also that people also use the word politics in some weird weaponizing way, in addition to what you're saying, which is already weaponizing. Exactly. It. In addition, they are making, then they're mad that something's political. Like, I don't want to hear about politics. I don't want to hear about politics. I don't want, and are angry mm -hmm. about that. And now are addressing the, the term politics on something that isn't even when you're not trying to make it political, but then they're saying it's political. I don't want to hear politics. And we're all blowing up this word politics like it's something that it isn't. And ultimately, yeah. even if it is, what we're talking about are all of our rights. That's all we're talking about are rights. Which piss, apparently pisses people off when you want to. Pisses people off. Why are you guys so angry? And look at the housewives. <clears throat> look at the housewives. Look at Tamara. Look at uh, Kelly Dodd, for instance. I'm just bringing an example where people will attack them just because they are like, oh, they're MAGA or they're Trumpers or they're this. But, you know, stop categorizing people according to what they're voting. It's not what they're voting. They can vote whoever they want. That's their entitlement it doesn't matter it's like do they align socially and on a higher level do they align with you it's not who you vote it's yeah. ethical it's it's so many other um factors and that's the problem now that everyone just says oh it's a it's a political issue it's who you vote i categorize you i don't like you i'm aggressive i'll attack you online yeah. It, the, the lines are so blurred right now. It's crazy. It's crazy. And, and, and as I would say, like as content creators, I guess, um, it's a very, very um, stressful space to be in yeah. in this yeah. time. Yes. And especially yes. talking blatantly about politics. I mean, we, uh, through COVID, we just learned like we're not, we're just not going to, um, we started to get mainly like politics in Washington, DC. We didn't really discuss COVID. We didn't discuss vaccines. We didn't discuss masks. We didn't discuss our own personal shit. We didn't discuss the CDC. We, I mean, <laughs> we, we, it, from that, we learned like at, if you have a platform, the most important thing that's going to be done to you, if somebody doesn't agree with you is they're going to try and deplatform you. And when you mentioned Kelly Dodd or whether it be us or whoever it's like, you know, we're going to, they want to, you know, deplatform you or get you canceled. Um, and when that's your source of income, it's scary as fuck. Like yeah. usually somebody's working yeah. whatever mm -hmm. job they have. And I mean, if it's in the media at all, that still counts, but if somebody's, you know, working at bank of America and they have a say something or have, you know, listen to a podcast that 
is, is, is problematic, right. they're probably not going to get fired. But if oh, we right. have Kelly Dodd on our show, which we did, um, a lot of our like, you know, original like 14 listeners got pissed, super pissed <laughs> off. At well, that. and also what's happening and if you what is interesting, I think talking about the podcast space or creation, if you look at politics, the what's happening happening in politics is happening in the content creator space which is a small minority is running the majority if i may say <laughs> so uh -huh. meaning that cancel culture true which is a small minority is the loudest voice in this space the room which is the same thing as what's going on in politics we have now adopted in sasara <laughs> or in creator town this thing where we are being run and bullied and pushed around by a small minority that um, is, in my opinion, just bullying everybody. Like whether mm -hmm. you agree with whatever they're mad about or not, mm -hmm. like unless somebody's got a gun or is legislating <laughs> your rights away, me saying some shit really isn't the end of the world. So it's very challenging to then live in that when you want to make a joke, when you want to bring levity, when you want to have humor, when you want to just vent, and then someone's like, I'm offended. So you, you're done. So you're done. Okay. Yeah. You can't talk yeah. about that anymore now. Cause I'm offended. Three other people are offended too. Well, now that's, we're fucked. That's now the funny fucked. part. It's always just the same, at least for me, like, I just like, I had to, like, I made a, I made a joke when Shannon Bedore had her initial DUI hit and run. Okay. Mm -hmm. I hadn't seen no. the TMZ footage. But in my mind, I know Shannon. So I just made a like funny, I did a green screen with me, myself in the car and I'm like driving and I just, it's a, it's the sound that like automatically like does something explosive. And then she just, you know, shakes it off and keeps on driving. When I tell that was you- a good video. When I tell sounds you- great. That sounds it, funny. Yeah. The weird yeah, thing- It was funny. Everyone on TikTok was laughing, thought it was funny, got the joke. Instagram- I had to take it down. I was getting bombarded. How dare you do this to her family? How dare you do this? This is beneath you. And I was like, oh my God, I'm just making a joke, guys. Like, I didn't drive like, the car. People lose their lives from <laughs> drunk drivers. She's Stop a mother. The light the right. She's yes. a yes. mother. That's exactly like, what they were sending me. Or yeah. you're making fun just... of her clear issue with alcohol by making okay. a joke. It's also, like... by the way, right? you know what? Like, also, I, I will say like, okay. Like, correct. I'm, yes, I am making fun that of it. Is correct. She's not going to rehab. She clearly doesn't care. So like, I'm not going to treat it like some fucking thing. She bitch does. drove into a house <laughs> so, and backed off. out and yeah. drove away. Because yeah. then, then walked her dog. Like, Hilarious. Oh, I'm putting this yeah. back up. That's right. exactly the, the exact thing that happened. Yes. So yeah. she got made fun of. What else happened? <laughs> nothing. She didn't go to nothing. Terrible nothing happened is happening to her. to her or her family. We all put ourselves in this space in the public, however, however small or big, and we have to make room to be made fun of. If we mm -hmm. are not, if we yeah. can't, then we shouldn't yeah. be here. It might suck. It might hurt. I my feelings get hurt. I don't like it. I don't want to be called certain things. I don't want to be made fun of in a certain way. But if I am, then I am, and I am because I'm here. So you're. It's like you don't get to do that and then not have a little dragging. Yeah. And people need of to course. heal because yep. they'll drag too. Those same people are going to come. It's exact. Like, it drives me crazy yeah. because the same people are coming for you. Are the, They're yelling at you, but they're still yelling at you. Yeah. 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 Like you better yeah. fucking stop because you're fucking, how dare you yeah. do that? You disgusting piece of shit. <laughs> and it's like, he's a disgusting piece of shit because he did that. Listen to yourself. Uh, yeah. yeah. Go yell at Shannon. Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> it's like, go yell at Shannon. She ran she into a house. house. She ran into a house. <laughs> She's not it's the so devil. It, but then yeah, it's, I see other people posting way worse things like cars zooming and scraping the ground and going over Sunset Boulevard. And I'm like, that to me would have been more like you know, yeah. Twitter. I'm in some algorithm where I see like, like kids on buses beating each other up. I have to see people abusing animals. I can't I possibly try and get that off. Why yeah, aren't you mobbing them? Why aren't you mobbing yeah. the guy that threw a cat over a, a fence? Why isn't the entire internet getting together and running over to that guy and literally killing him? Why are we worried about you making a video about Shannon Bedore who literally drove into someone's house and then pretended she didn't by walking her dog? 
because again it goes back to the politics it goes back even to reality tv to a stupid show that we all watch for entertainment right it goes back to the political everyone just projects their own political beliefs their own ethics their own background their own whatever insecurities it on triggers that. people that's why it i think the people that, that but... were angry by that were probably someone who's drove into a house or a pole at one point and that right. triggered them that's the only way i can reason yeah. I, don't, I don't react that way unless it is like animal abuse or yeah that are being ganged up on like i don't want to see that stuff and why no. aren't there things being done about it and it's, it's wrong because people censor people right now right people like why do we have content creator why are we do we have this podcast it's because we do want to shed the light and we do want people to get to know the content creators that they love and they follow and the reason us we became content creators is because we're using platforms where we have freedom of speech and we can create whatever we want and we can say our own opinions because if you want to follow me, you can follow me. If you don't, you don't. But the issue is something that you can't do on TV. But the issue is not only do you have people who are trying to censor you, your opinions on your channel, on your platform, mm -hmm. but then you've got the platform youtube that are also trying to censor and de yeah. demonetize content creators it happened to me recently with the russell brand um you've heard about the whole russell brand situation it's funny i was going to bring up russell brand earlier okay. when talking about it being everything being politicized even we would be yelled at even if we were talking housewives because it, everything becomes political that's to me that's a good example russell brand because mm -hmm. the the conversation becomes gets away from what he did which it, his right. sexual crimes that, that he's alleged of doing and becomes about his politics. And now we're all on the side of the people who believe he did it are all liberal and the people who don't are all conservative. I'm like, why are we even discussing his politics? <laughs> why, right. are, why are we discussing it? Right, exactly. exactly. It right. doesn't fit there. It just doesn't fit, but they always make it fit there. They I always see fit. my comments start out with, it's funny laughing emojis. And then I come back an hour later and it's like, she's like, yeah. Like, no, which one? Which one are you talking about? It's like, oh, I can't. I don't. So what yeah. happened? YouTube deep platform Russell Brand, right? Well, they they demonetized my video because I did a reading on that. So it was just like you know, I did a I do depending on what happens in the pop culture world and the TV world, I'll do readings. I'll read around them, especially those cases where it's a little bit unclear as to what's happened. So so I did this reading and I did. I saw that he was guilty, like that. You, you must know, be and liberal. Actually, I think we can, I think we can all see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we can all I see mean, it. I think we yeah. can all and see it. Just we so we're clear, she is also a liberal. Just yeah, clear. right. <laughs> Probably your video that made everybody say, "Only right. right. liberals that think he's guilty." Like, I'm like so fucking. Sure. And it got right. demonetized. It was the only video that I put out. I've put out so many videos on so many people. And that got demonetized straight away. And I spoke to another content creator. He's huge on YouTube. He's got 700K followers. He, wow. you know, he's basically commentating um, on what's happening. And he said that two of the videos on Russell Brand that he did, they were instantly demonetized as well. So I'm, I'm starting to think what's going on here. Why are we not? YouTube used to be, you know, used to be the place where we have the freedom to be yeah. ourselves. But not anymore. No, no. Not anymore. I mean, the YouTube is one of the worst. COVID, one of the worst. COVID changed yeah, I agree. YouTube. Yeah. COVID changed YouTube because everyone started going on YouTube to try to dispel things about things. And they were like, oh, nope, nope, nope. Right. So you weren't even allowed to say the word. Yeah, right. that was a mistake. I mean, and honestly, and even with YouTube, like, which obviously this is going to be on YouTube. So I guess we can kiss the monetization of this goodbye. This is a three of you. <laughs> it's okay. Um, I've already That's, been cussing. No. All while I'm cussing, I'm thinking, great. There now you should gonna bury this, this video because I'm cussing. I'm, I'm like, we're I gonna, can't with We're that. gonna email you and be like, actually, we've been fined four thousand yeah. dollars because you right. said the yeah. F word four times. Uh, <laughs> I mean, thank God Julie hasn't said the R word because she'll say that and I'll be like, Don't say it. Like you can't I say I just realized you can't say I, R A P E. Right. You can't say like S A, you know, they all yeah. all the big YouTubers have this like second hand and we're like you know, old people that are like, wait, what? That's R. What? What's S? What does that mean? R. Yeah. She got R? <laughs> I don't understand. Yeah. And it's just like, I think, I mean, I understand that word being triggering and, and I completely understand yeah, it. Come on, you guys. Yeah. And even with eating disorders and stuff, like, no. there's something to be said about if somebody did commit 
R or S A, maybe mm-hmm. we should be saying the words Agreed. because they're horrific acts yep. and not, you know, you know, diminishing them into uh, like abbreviations. That's one. Two, YouTube is the the you know the CEO of like child exploitation where kids right. are on there. They're not paid. Their parents get paid. They're not protected by a union. And now every ch- practically, I would say the majority of the of the family channels have become very problematic with a lot yes. of abuse being exposed. This is just facts. Oh yeah. And yeah. Whether yeah. it be teenagers being groomed by content creators who are, you know, in their early 20s. So uh, it's it's a lot of problems on YouTube they need to be addressing and it not seems, demonetizing a right. Russell Brand video. And it I'm seems sorry. to me, I don't know if I can say this word, <laughs> but it seems to me that YouTube might be a little S S and oh, M assist M assist and M assistness. Yeah, I mean these are all things that they're taking, like like children they're taking away from women. women get like it's all stuff that just reeks of like yeah. Of well, activism. YouTube wants to make advertisers happy. That's all they care about. So you can't use those words because advertisers don't want those words to be used. Because okay. so it all comes down to money, honey. Yeah, but see, you know, the problem, it all comes down to- the problem that I have with all of this is that people, these corporations, I get it. They want to keep their dollars where they are, but you're just nothing's changing. My is my point. They're just checking boxes. That's it. They're saying, oh, now we have to be inclusive. So make sure we've got X, 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 X. Great. Mm-hmm. They don't care if in fact this actually is the meaning of this and what it means to the people that will see themselves in that campaign or whatever it is. But That's then you have like other people that are just like, they want to say what they want to say, but some there's no line anymore. So now every, it feels like I'm when I talk on TikTok, I have to do the same thing because they'll flag it. I learned that the hard way. And but then you have comments like, why are you talking to me like I'm a child? Or why are you spelling things out on TikTok? <laughs> or what's corn? What is corn? But that's the word you can use for P-O-R-N. Because if you say the oh. P-O-R-N, then bye, wow. you're never going to see that. I won't like even- pornography? Pornography. <laughs> pornography. Uh, like corn hub? Yes, exactly. <laughs> you would I have love to, corn hub. You would have to say it like you that. Mean corn you mean star? corn star? <laughs> Unicorn? Yeah. Yeah. You corn? Are you a corn star? Yeah, yes. corn star. Exactly. Or oh, wow. like, you did know, you like ever talk to a <laughs> pornographer? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, wow. Well, we learned something just new. Corn. Yeah. So it's just like it, there's no line anymore, and it's just like um, I also. And you're right. Think nothing changes. Nothing. Nothing changes. changes on the inside. I mean, where it really would count yeah. to make the bigger impact. It's just for box checking and making sure we're all compliant um, on the outside. Right. Well, uh, like it comes back to like COVID yeah. where they, with YouTube, where they, and again, I didn't put it together that it was advertisers, but I guess that makes sense. But YouTube should stand for something as well. But, mm-hmm. you know, you can take everyone, deplatform all the people that are trying to, you know, investigate or have a different opinion on it. But at the end of the day, the truth was the truth and the truth came out. And it was like, it didn't matter that you took those people off. It didn't, make the vaccine any more or less effective letting those people speak and it didn't make anyone who didn't want to get the vaccine go fucking get the vaccine whatever made those people get it people who didn't Mm -hmm. want to whether it was their employer or their family or whatever that's what made them do it it wasn't youtube hearing it or not hearing it or saying no nothing changed it was no it's also hypocritical you can't say that one thing is misinformation and then lend a million other things that are misinformation out there uh, just, yes, it's bullshit and it's hypo- it's hypo- hypo- hypocrisy. And if an advertiser, you know, if the ACLU is advertising on YouTube, I don't think they would mind the R word if it's used in, in whatever. They're not going to care. There's going to be certain advertisers who are going to stand by certain things. So why don't you get a, yourself a filter, YouTube, <laughs> and let people say what they want and see which advertisers fall into which thing. Bud Light will probably uh, go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like they've yeah. shown themselves to want to be with everyone who believes anything at any time so great and then there's going to be you know someone else whose state farm is not going to want to be involved with certain things so okay so That's like fun. it's just like you're a hypocrite you're a hypocrite you're a hypocrite, you're a hypocrite. well it's it's just like when <laughs> when anything gets like turned over like when target initially was not for like 
pride or whatever but then they're like oh right. we can make money off of this yo now look at them <laughs> now we have yeah. people going into target like this is where the gays are this is my this gays are I have the videos of like this guy I, I don't want to walk in here and see gay in target and they literally like go through target now there's video upon video upon video Where's the proud area? Like, you know where the proud area is. Or it's always the same looking girl from like Kentucky with the same dry bar blowout. <laughs> and like, she's like, I was in Target and they had yeah, <laughs> tucking bathing suits where my four year old could touch it. What mm -hmm. am I supposed to tell her? That's hmm? right. What yeah. am I supposed to tell my daughter when that little boy is trying on? No, no, ma'am. We're not going to do that. <laughs> And it's just like <laughs> 17,000 and they all have 300,000 likes and everyone's yeah. just like, girl. <laughs> right, America. And I'm just like, w this is, I wouldn't have, I don't even pay attention. I wouldn't have known that they even no sold one. tucking swimwear. You know what I mean? But like, no one come would. to find out they yeah. weren't in the little kids section. They were in the like teen and up age session. yeah where like, that is necessary yeah, why exactly. are you who's looking around for that stuff yeah though? you're the perv yeah, yeah. get out of the boys bathing suit area right gross exactly yeah. exactly or the girls or exactly right mm -hmm. well we solved that <laughs> no. okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> So I wanted to ask you, because you've been, you've kind of like experienced and you've done all, all facets, let's say, because you've been on TV, you have a podcast, you were on radio recently. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. We were, um, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so the question is, because you've seen all sides of things and the good, the bad and the ugly. Okay. Where do you see content creation going where is it heading do you feel that radio and tv have a sell-by date because it seems so it seems so but on the other hand we have as we just discussed we've got youtube and other platforms where they are censoring and there is a political agenda behind that so where do you see all this going is that shit on the floor right there where uh, right there no what is it? It's a, it's a chew. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. Um, it just looks like. <laughs> Who did that? It almost looked like a dessert. Ew. Oh, okay. As long as. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't rec easily recognizable as like feces. <laughs> um, okay. So oh. I will say I would like for you to do a reading on. Um, I really would like this. And if you do a separate video, then we'll watch that video. Um, like a real take your time do the reading i what i see a hundred percent with um satellite radio is i feel that satellite radio is going to go under i don't know about terrestrial radio um which people listen to in their cars and they're from we had a show on satellite radio and then we also had a show on regular radio which is just in your car mm -hmm. am fm um what we learned from both is that um the thing with with satellite radio the reason that it's popular at all is because people is for people's commutes in rural areas. So on the coasts, let's say in America, right? People who listen to satellite radio, like Sirius, they mm -hmm. usually use Wi-Fi to do that. They don't do it on a radio in their car. They sure. do it on their phone. But in the like middle of the country, the ma the majority of their subscribers all do it in their car because they're driving and they can get a satellite in space where they can't get wi-fi which mm. that's a problem with america that we need to be addressing youtube wants to address something go address that how about put some fucking wi-fi towers or whatever in indiana so that they are mm. wherever kentucky so they don't mm. have to be without wi-fi like wi-fi deserts that's just unacceptable in 2023 but anyway that's political but i do think that <laughs> i think sirius is going to go under I don't think there's, I think Spotify and podcasts and particularly Spotify, Apple music, which sucks, but still, um, there is no reason for Sirius. They don't, um, they're not utilized as a place for music on any of their talk channels, like radio Andy. I, I don't know about Howard Stern, but I know on radio Andy, they don't even have the rights to any of the music. They can only play the music for 30 seconds. Mm. And if they play it longer, mm. they get, they have to pay. That is some bullshit. Like you're a satellite. That's the same in England, by the way. In England, it's the same thing. And yeah. you're not allowed to talk over music. So if there are lyrics on the song, you're not allowed to talk over them. Oh. Because I used to really? do radio in wow. England. Yeah. Yeah. 
very wow. very strict a lot of guidelines a lot wow. which does not make radio fun you no. would think that radio would be fun because you've got microphone you can play music you can talk about things yeah. podcasting which is now podcasting no it's not fun because you've got all of these you know guidelines and regulations and it's yeah i see what you mean absolutely yeah. And so I think I think other than Howard Stern, who's it, his his own thing at Sirius, he has his own everything. He has his own board. He has his own wing. He's not he doesn't share any of the same staff all the way from the top to the bottom, except, I guess, for the CEO, Jennifer Witt, with anyone else at Sirius. Mm -hmm. He has his totally own th thing, encapsulated thing. So he can keep going, I guess, but I believe that the rest of series, I don't really know. That's what you're going to find out through your psychic vibes. <laughs> Wait, I've got something date. to tell you. Okay. I've got something. I don't know if we're going to keep it in. It's up to you girls. If you want to keep it in, I'm, I'm going to say it. I okay. You, I'm looking at you because you're editing. Um, okay. So when the whole drama with Heather McDonald, Jeff Lewis, and you girls happened. Okay. Cause there was a lot of talk and there was a lot. So I did a reading um and it's on my youtube you can always go back and watch it um so one of the questions i do these live right and i have a really great community and the chat always like chimes in they always you know they ask questions and i ask the cards and then i answer them one of the question was about jeff lewis channel you know what's the future what's going to happen i'm going to tell you girls i see it going under i said i said i said for Heather, because people ask me about Heather McDonald, they said, what are, what are the going to be like, let's say, what are the consequences for Heather with all of that stuff going on? And I said, she's a Gemini. She's she is resilient. She's going to come back on top. She'll figure it out. She'll change the format of her podcast. She will change things around. She'll be OK. Jeff Lewis, though. Not so much. Sorry. Not sorry. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. So now, I don't that see mean, that though, channel going does, anywhere. Does that also yeah. mean his show or just the channel? The channel, I read his channel, but I also okay. think that Jeff on a personal level, um, yeah, I oh. see a storm brewing. Mm. Something, Something's coming his way, which is not going to be good. It's I would like to good. go. You're welcome to leave that right the fuck on in. Um, <laughs> Um, Why am I not surprised? Can we cancel that interview yeah. request with Jeff, please? <laughs> um, I do want to know though about like about Sirius as a as a whole. I mean, because we didn't just have you know an issue with Jeff. I mean, it was serious. Jeff was like you know one of our best friends, so that was a personal know. you know sadness and trauma. But yeah. it was serious that ultimately legally. Um, broke our contract so I, yeah. I and I do feel like they're having a lot of I mean you read they're serious the the main company is being sued <clears throat> um uh, for 150 million dollars for unpaid um royalties royalties so that's got to be Holy something Holy um shit. look I've got my deck here I'm oh, go on <laughs> go on go on yeah <laughs> yeah so like we're just sort of what wondering or theorizing just within ourselves like what is going on with Sirius like and your question was what we see for the future. And I mean, definitely with that, there's no way that Spotify doesn't take take that completely over in yeah, podcasts. Right. I don't know how Sirius can continue to compete with, if we're talking about a subscription model for things, which is all it is, mm -hmm. podcasts, which have whatever, whether it's Spotify, Stitcher, and Patreon, and now there's other ones like Patreon that are coming up, but Patreon has become so big. People are subscribing to it. I don't know that they need something they don't. like and serious. they don't need something with so, like a corporate yeah. overlord, right? Who's even like when they yeah. tried to deplatform Joe Rogan, who got that huge payout for Spotify. Mm. And you know, think what you want about Joe Rogan, but it didn't fucking work. Yes, right. It didn't no. work. Mm. People didn't are always gonna find like what they want to hear anyway. So yeah, deplatforming right. someone like. People are pissed off. There's there's a plethora of people that can't stand Candace Owens, right? Right. Yeah. She's not yeah. going anywhere. Nowhere. You, know, you, know, you but, can deplatform her nowhere. all you want, but she, yep. someone's going to pick her up because yep. there's an audience for her is the point. There sure is. But who yep. won't pick her up, though, probably is someone like Sirius or no. even Fox. 
So that's where I think those people, it's not going to work because people do want freedom of speech. They do want unfiltered. They don't want some bullshit where, yeah, you have a corporate overlord telling you what to do, telling you what to say, telling you what you can't say. And by the way, YouTube will, will, will take themselves right out the market if they continue to do that as well, because they're acting like a serious. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, or they're telling yeah, people what absolutely. they can't, can't right. say and being censoring. Right. So I think anything that's, you know, we cuss every other word on our <laughs> podcast and we have advertisers now, you know, certainly it's not State Farm and maybe some of the advertisers on YouTube, but there's a mm. way to have advertisers with whatever content. And yeah, exactly. I think that's going to oh, yeah. be where it goes. Yeah. Exactly. And to answer your question regarding serious, right? Yes. So are you ready for this? So yes. they are considering to change things like, like the format of the, the, the whole, like the programming, they're going to bring in um, people that used to be popular, like 10, 15 years ago, people that have been forgotten maybe big radio names mm. from the past or big personalities that used to be personalities, let's say in the 10, 15 years ago. Okay. Just to try things out, but okay. it's not going to work out. It's not going to work out. Cause, <laughs> Cause that's a bad, a bad idea. Mess. Yeah. Like <laughs> well, I would idea. never think it's that's a good idea. Why yeah. would you do that? I yeah. can't even think of one popular radio. The only, love the love literally, yeah. well, he already has a show. Oh. Yes, he's still on the radio. I'm literally like thinking like Kurt who? Loader. Like I'm thinking like oh, people MTV from MTV, DJs. but those aren't radio people. Well, they're gonna no bring what, what? Not necessarily radio. It could be TV personalities, but yeah. I'm feeling more radio. So try to like bring radio back to its old heydays. Interesting, but not working out with that Seven of Cups. Um, how would that yeah. work? I don't see how they would think that would work. Anyways, go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a radio producer, right. but I can tell you this. Um, then it's not going to work out. So they're going to try something else. So there's going to be a lot of shuffling, reshuffling, rebranding, and a lot of that in the programming. They're going to cut a lot of shows. I feel mm. a lot of their programming, they're going to keep less, but maybe longer instead of having one hour shows or two hour shows, maybe it's going to be two, two and a half hour shows. Mm. Okay. Um, and trying to figure it out. Um, they're also going to expand. Listen to this. I think this is a monetary thing. They're, they might make their app accessible internationally because I see that they're going to try to tap into an interna a more international uh, view. Well, that's uh, smart. I mean, audience. Yeah. Yeah. They should. They should. Yeah, they should. But they should fix their app first because it doesn't well, really I, oh, work. Yeah. No, it, right? it's, it's horrible. Awful. It's horrible. So I see that trying to expand internationally, but oh, yeah. eventually it's all going to fold. What a wonderful it's day. Like, yeah. What Great. a wonderful, wonderful day. <laughs> <laughs> mm. God, I have just got yeah. a in my staff yeah. all of a sudden. You know, I um, mean... So you 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 agree with that, right? So in your personal opinion, this is how you see radio or Sirius or the satellite Radio I mean, shows, I think that radio. the trend, I think what we're watching, even with TV, it's like streaming. People are subscribing to every single thing that they want to watch or listen to. That's what that's what it seems to be. So, but there's yeah, so many though. Con, there's Sirius so many subscri subscriptions. There's so I, people well, unsubscribe, resubscribe because it's so many. You subscribe to Spotify, too. you subscribe to Netflix, yep. and then you've got the Patreons, and then you've got yep. the this, and then yeah. it adds up. It oh adds yes, up. it does. It completely adds up. I yeah, I think that, but I do think that with radio, because of Patreon and and podcasting, it's just unnecessary. Like yeah. something like Sirius, podcasts alone. There's are there? I don't even thousand. It's like there's just so much content. There's so much yeah. content that you can. And a lot of it's free. free. Right. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So, uh, would you go back to do to doing TV under yeah. different oh, circumstances? Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, Absolutely. what would you do ideally? Let's say I'm a producer and I come to you and I'm like, "Listen, Judy and Brandy, I want you to have a show. We want to do a show around you. You know, you just decide what you want, free range. What would you do? Corn. <laughs> um, what would we do? Anything we want. I mean, I think we probably continue doing some sort of commentary. 
right? Yeah, I mean, we really liked People's Couch. It was an ensemble. We liked that. That vibe. was so good. You I know, love that like show. All different. I missed that show. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's yeah. really. We don't want to just be the only people on the show. That show had all different types of people, yeah. all different types of voices. Yeah. We were just one voice amidst a lot of voices, mm -hmm. and it was fun. And you know, something like that. And I mean, that show does does still have a place. I mean, it's huge still in England. Yeah, right? yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's so. huge, but it started in England. It that, started yeah. in England. Yeah. Box. and we it's would, still doing well. That would be yeah. the dream. That would be the dream job. Because there's nothing we love more than watching TV. And then just, and it's also, it's also instant. Um, it's instant, not gratification, but it's instant call and response, which also is fun. So like, it's like a it's, visual Twitter. Yeah. So when we're trying to, when you're doing a show and you're trying to think of what to say, and blah, 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 when you're reacting to something, it's already happening. It's happening for you. And all you need to do is react. And we're, you're doing it with somebody that you do that with naturally. I mean, we sit Why don't you do it on do YouTube? Why don't you do it on YouTube? Why don't you start a YouTube channel? Yeah, right. You the got, copyright yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a copyright issue, and then it's a it's, it's yeah, actually, that's true. It's pretty labor intensive. I mean, yeah, they the yeah. editing in something like that, mm -hmm. and and yeah, they had to get a lot of that stuff cleared, and so. If anyone out there listening though wants to do it, we'll do it. <laughs> I I would I would love to do there it. I. I would no. I mean, I'm dead serious, and I want to say this um, be before I lose my thought on this. I will say that obviously I do commentary, full time, Bravo shows, but it's because of the People's Couch and specifically you two, where I was like, I could actually fucking do this. Oh, that's nice. Thank so you. I do, I do. That's why when I like fangirled earlier, it's just like it's nice to it's always a full circle moment for me, especially in my journey, uh, because so many people that I've come into contact with don't realize I was watching them or they kind mm. of helped me in my journey. So that's why cool. I've always been a supporter of people's couch and you guys and, and just, oh, thank you. You guys are yeah. super and talented. Let me I love that you said that. And let me just say, I hope you realize that the whole drama and everything that unfolded with uh, Jeff Lewis and the Jeff Lewis channel it really opened up a can of worms where people, you know, you have a very, very fanatical following, I'm going to say, who were really, really um, invested in, excuse me, invested in you and really supported you. And it really, see how tides have turned? People, because of everything that happened and because you're so vocal regarding, you know, corporate, regarding the politics behind things, et cetera, people are now open They've opened their eyes and they're just staring clear and staring away from this, from this world. And it's partly because of you. It's partly because of you. And it's because, you know, you weren't treated fairly. No one knows the details. Only you know the details, but we're all intuitive enough to be able mm -hmm. to intuitively know what happened there. Right. Um, it's, it's a shame for your relationship and your friendship with Jeff. That's the most, the, the, the sad part that came out of that. But the positive is that you actually, you just proved, you proved to people that this is a shitty world. This is like <laughs> business world. The corporate world is just a big Oof. business. It's a machine that doesn't give a shit about, it's about people, about the viewers. Mm -hmm. It cares about the advertisers, the revenue and the investors. And so you girls, I know it's tough and we'll, we'll We'll read a little bit around what's coming for you. But um, intuitively, I just want to say that you went through a hurdle. But how I see it is that you're opening yourselves doors for you, new doors, new opportunities, new kind of content that you are about to create. You're not aware of it yet, but you're about to. <laughs> Okay, good. I love you. Heard it yeah. I do girl. think that I told you, and I told Brandy when we first got the show. What was what's weird is that when we first got that serious show, I had this feeling, and I don't, I'm not intuitive, and I'm not much of anything. And PS, you're say, a we cancer. You are intuitive. Yeah, she is. I, we pitched that oh. show, and when, no matter what Jeff says or anyone else who's lurking on it now we pitched that show we we've, we've gone on the howard stern wrap-up show we had the vanderpump rules after show 
we've done it before and we we pitched that show it was never in jeff's mind we knew he was getting his channel and we pitched it and it was it was yeah, it was your show yeah and it was our idea and it wasn't jeff's yeah. idea he'd never even thought of it and it wasn't anyone else's idea and it wasn't series's idea it right. was our idea and so we I did but i don't think he, he didn't claim it was his idea though i think he he gave you credit for that as far as i know Okay. Right? We or were am different. I missing something? I know we've heard okay. different things, but at one point there was a. I can say this in an ambiguous way. When we did hear from the executive at the end, who did fire us, and I, we, I had a conversation with him, and I, and in the conversation, he then sort of said to me, "What we want to do is the Howard Stern model," and I, in return, was like, "That's what we pitched to you." That's what we wanted for this entire hmm. thing was for Jeff to like, that's our idea. So that from him, he took that on as his own. Yeah. And if he hears that, oh. he can go ahead and call me if he wants to talk about it. But that's what's <laughs> up. So regardless, and that was one of the things about you're talking about corporate, like the spin is the gaslighting, the gaslighting. and the spin is absolutely unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. So, yes, it is. It's unbelievable. But <laughs> yeah, fine. we know. We know. Okay. So you, it's unreal. But okay. So I said to Randy, I was like, I have this feeling inside. There's this feeling inside when we got the show. Now, I thought it was about the show and I thought it was going to be about growing with Jeff and the channel and the do. But I did have this overwhelming feeling. It was like this amazing feeling of like. Just and I had a bad feeling. <laughs> and I am intuitive. <laughs> And I had a bad feeling and I'd be like, I just have this bad feeling. And she didn't. And I was like, okay, why explain to me? And really we were both right, I guess. I guess so. But, mm. but now had it. Yeah. part of the feeling I had was this, there's, there'd been a time in our lives where we felt stuck and stagnant and just, there was a darkness and, and, you know, it happens, you just hit a wall or whatever, and creatively things just change. And, mm -hmm. and I just started to have this feeling of like, I'm feeling the juices. I'm just feeling these <laughs> juices are coming back. And I think that from what you're saying, I'm wondering if that feeling was just sort of floating around waiting for this moment and for now, which the yeah. feelings are still there. And we have creatively started to expand a little more and things are changing. And I do feel like maybe what you're saying is that I'm going to hold on. I'm going to connect to that. I'm going to really connect to that. I'm going to connect to that. I'm going to connect to that. <laughs> And, and, and since we're different. on the topic, I'm going to pull some cards for you individually, okay? Or do you yeah. want me to pull a card for you together? Because you are a package deal anyway, so. <laughs> what do you think? You wanna, can we do both? Okay, so I'll start with both. Okay, start with both. Okay, if it's good. let's we'll see. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. so I then need to find out that I'm dying yeah. <laughs> and she's going to move on. Okay, go ahead. No, I never. <laughs> <laughs> I would never. Um, okay. So we'll do for the next six to eight months. Okay. 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 So a standing meeting on Fridays with all of us where we discuss these things. That's yes. <laughs> right. I like when you said you had a thing with her before this, this episode where you got like an update, but really her updates for you are kind of her updates for herself too. <laughs> you know right yeah, yeah i never thought of that yeah and you're like well you're gonna be doing great <laughs> fantastic <laughs> funny you said that because we were supposed to launch this podcast or start this pod podcast six months ago and you know we had already started we had the idea sort of the idea of the format etc we both looked at each other one day and we're like uh, -uh the timing's wrong we don't feel this is right hmm. and we were right we were right because now we both feel the timing is right, that this is going to be successful. We feel very confident in the format of the show, et cetera. So I always say, listen to your intuition. Sometimes your rational thinking jumps in, but it confuses you because that's normal because it's you're, you, you, you're programmed, you know, since you were little to think in a certain way and to see things in a certain way and categorize things. And you forget to listen to your intuition and intuition is very important. And you're both very, very intuitive, both of you. It has nothing to do, I'm telling you now as a psychic that you're both very intuitive, but sometimes you choose not to. Other, maybe because you have hope that something might work. So you're like, oh, I don't feel good about it, but let's see, let's make this work and hopefully it will. Or it's because out of stress, you know, out of like the stress or the angst because of, everything else that's happening in your lives. So 
my advice to you is always follow your intuition because you can never go wrong when it comes to intuition. And especially when you're as intuitive as the two of you. So I'm playing cards now. To whoever's okay. watching. I always, whenever I like pray or meditate, I always, um, well, it just depends. If I'm doing like transcendental meditation, then I'm not thinking anything. If I'm doing like a, like. We I'm only like, talk about Jesus here, sweetheart. Yeah, okay. <laughs> whenever I'm talking to our heavenly father. Yeah, when I pray to the father. Um, I always <laughs> like pray to the universe, like. I ask the universe to like, to like make my intuition so loud that every other thing drowns out. So it's like, if I'm driving, like, as I imagine if I'm driving on in the at nighttime, that the street I'm supposed to turn down has like the brightest lights on it. And that's what I try to always envision in my mind when I'm, when I'm asking for my intuition, like make every decision I'm supposed to make so loud and so bright that I can hear it. And just like, Perfect. I like ask for it to be stronger Perfect. and stronger. That's a good idea, actually. Because I, really I also can't see streets at night. So also <laughs> that, but that's a good idea. I can't see streets a day. So. Sometimes I can't, sometimes I can't decipher if it's intuition or I'm just being like me, you know, like, or like wishful thinking you know? or something. Yeah, exactly. or yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you know? How can you it tell? makes it stronger? It makes your subconscious like mind and voice like louder. It, and it, it does help. I found that it really helps. Yeah. That is really good idea. And it's, it's using visualization as well. It's just like manifesting. If you use visual, visualization, if you visualize something as if it's right in front of you, you create it. You really create it. And you, you, you get attached to that energy. So you start feeling things. And that's where your intuition is loud, loud and clear. So, you know, there are little techniques, little things that people can do to really exercise that and really get to know to differentiate between intuition and thought. Hmm. once you get used to that and you know what the difference is then you know your life just changes so let's go back to you because I've got good news okay, okay. so this is for the two of you okay together as a package deal as I said so I do see some kind of so I see a third person so I see maybe a collaboration or a partnership this is the three of cups there you hmm. go okay um with a third person um someone I feel not someone new someone you meet someone you already know someone you already trust or someone you've already worked with so you know the rapport you have a rapport with them you know what it's like so I do see a partnership collaboration hey. with someone coming here's the thing hard work so the next year 10 months, not even six to eight months, 10 months to a year, I see a lot of work. So I feel that you're going to um, take on some more projects or take on something else on top of your podcast. Okay. Something else is coming your way, which is, okay. Spirit said, it's not necessarily going to be yours. So it's not going to be like your production on your platform. I feel it's going to be more so on someone else's or a, a different platform. This is what I see, this additional thing coming. And here's here's where I want to share, this is exciting for you. I got the Nine of Cups. Nine of Cups in tarot is the wish card. It means that you're manifesting your future, you're manifesting your dreams, and it's also your wish, your desires are coming to light. They're coming true, okay? So everything that you've been working on the last year so since 2022 beginning of 2022 if there's something that you've put energy and focus on and maybe you just left it aside you know or just said okay we'll revisit this later that's coming back and it's going to be successful they don't want i see 2024 bringing a lot a lot of new opportunities for you Ooh, a lot of new old. opportunities for you. Okay. And a lot of them are out of the blue and really unexpected. So, and when I mean out of the blue, like not like someone just appears one day or you get a DM or an email and they're like, Hey, Julie and Brandy, we've got this proposal for you. We want to do this or this. And you're like, where did this come from? Or where did this person come from? So I see a lot of that happening and that I have the moon here. Wow. This is more on a personal level for both of you. It has to do with your emotions and your feelings. And it's more working on that, more working on letting go of the past, letting go of past disappointments, 
past uh, resentments totally and just going forward clean, you know, on a clean slate, really, um, and letting go. Because if you carry this type of energy or these types of emotions and feelings, you can really change the outcome of some of these uh, opportunities that are coming Ooh. for both of you. But it wow. looks really, really, really promising, especially wow. when when I pull the nine of cups. When I get that, it's always like spirits like two thumbs up. Wow. Oh, You're on a good path. You're on a good path. So shall we do individually now? Who wants to go first? Do we need to? I like that. I, think I that's thought enough. that was good. <laughs> I think that's is that enough? Too. Okay. Yeah, I think okay. that's enough. Yeah. We, we can always do it, it privately. You know, you can so always is that reach rare out and to do get, it privately. To get them that good? To get good cards like that? No, it depends. You get good and bad. So um, we didn't get any bad. But it, you didn't get any bad because there is right. nothing bad. It's it's just, it's it's to me what, how I'm reading it. And, and this is like a really quick reading. Usually I just go really deep into things. When I read for, I do uh, private readings, but what I see is that doors are opening and opportunities are opening. Why? Because you left behind even the Jeff stuff, even if it costs you a lot emotionally losing that friendship, it's actually good. I'm sorry to say this because people might be hearing this and just, <laughs> but it really just letting go of that energy and letting go of that attachment is making room and space for new things to come your way. This is what's happening. All this had to happen. Had to happen for you to move, to, to pick up speed, to pick up you know power and just move forward. Otherwise it wouldn't have happened. It, it wouldn't. When I heard that you girls were just taking over the, um, the after show, I was rooting for you because as I, I said, I really love listening to you and I follow you, but I had a bad feeling. I'm like, oh, I don't, so did she. I, I, I knew <laughs> you that you would come out of this hurt. Is that sad? That's yeah. Sad. It's that's sad, but it's sad, but it's positive at the same time because that's done. You know, those ties energetically it's cut. It's done. So now you've got room for new opportunities and that will help you grow and bring in some money. Good. Yeah. Oh. I also oh, dog agrees. Yeah. <laughs> I um I also want to say too, like um, you know, TV streaming is growing exponentially. Like yes. I'm part of the Roku yeah. developer uh platform. So like people more and more are also creating on a higher level or maybe content that they don't feel is going to do as well on YouTube, but would do better on a TV setting mm. are going more that direction. And because now they are fully SDK model channels, it's not just direct publishing channels anymore. You have this like plethora of like a whole new international audience that you may not necessarily get. And it's treated like real TV. You are approached by real advertisers. I was just wow. having this conversation with you, Natalie, before we jumped on here because we were just like, they've done so much. But Roku's on every TV. So their whole strategy is like, you have content, you have content. We'll make it really simple for you to come over here and put it on here and treat it like, you know, because they have a subscription model for their stuff too, which is, is great because if someone's not comfortable, let's say doing a Patreon, and they feel like, I want to do a bigger show or a longer show that's better for a TV format where people are going to want to watch this on, t like, in their living rooms. They can charge, like, what Hulu does. Like, you can pay $3.99, you get this access to this content, yeah. or you can pay $7.99 and get the full gamut. But it's all your ownership. No one up top is being like, you can't put that episode out yet. You know, like, or whatever. It's your stuff. And yeah. so people are doing more direct like, I want it now, I want to make it now, and I want to post it now. And that's what people, I think, are kind of starting to notice, that they don't need the corporations. 
or yeah it's pretty well. interesting that's really interesting yeah i know nothing really so basically, about that i look into that think outside the box because you never know what type or what kind of opportunities coming your way and they are i see several i see quite a bit but it's just you girls have to be selective you really have to be selective just because you have all these opportunities and we all tend to do that you know when you're you know self-employed and you really have to hustle exactly. and work hard to yep. make your you know it's just that sometimes you have to say no and you have to be selective. You're not going to miss opportunities. You're not throwing something away just because you're saying no. It's just maybe the timing is not right for now. You know, just a piece of advice. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. That is good. That's good. Woo-hoo. Right. Wow. So I right. I think okay. after this, we can uh, wrap it up. We yeah. Had your reading as well. So a lot of positive things coming your way. We really, really enjoyed this. We hope you can come back sometime. Yeah, that was really fun. Totally fun. Good luck with time. your guys' show. It's it was awesome. It's mm-hmm. gonna go well. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, get a lot of good creator better than us. <laughs> oh, <laughs> please <laughs> give me a break. Um, I, I I'm I'm debating on whether I need to like edit out the like the my jaw being open for ten minutes when Natalie came on. She's like, hi, and I was like, hi. <laughs> That's so nice wow that's so nice so nice you really made our day yeah i think you I did think I can really say both of us. you really yeah. made our day both of you yeah well, and it's friday and um I, offline if you guys want to connect i have um i have connections in the build out i've built many a roku streaming channels i know all the gamut so if you have questions feel free to reach out I'm more than happy to answer seriously okay and, and if you want a reading all. or if you want yeah. an advisor a spiritual advisor <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, I we did. could have definitely like, like maybe have you on the podcast to give us readings on some, like next year is an election year. I'm sure you're gonna be doing a lot of readings on like the election. Mm, I would love that because yeah, I do cool. readings on every everything, like Ooh, everything. Oh, yeah, cool, cool. Let's do that. Yeah, we could do <laughs> that. Yeah, a hundred percent. I would love that. Well, then I guess we have lots to talk about. All yeah. of us booked and busy, baby. Okay. Booked, booked and busy. And, yeah. And busy. <laughs> Booked and blessed booked with the Lord blessed. Jesus Christ. From our That's Heavenly right. Father. <laughs> booked and blessed. Heavenly Father. Okay? <laughs> Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Amen. Okay. Thank you guys All right, so then we'll much. Talk to you. We'll talk to you very soon. Like yes, very soon. Very we'll soon. talk to you soon. Okay, Have good. a wonderful Thank weekend. You. Nice meeting Thank you. you so much. Nice, nice meeting you as well. You. All right, we'll Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 All right, guys. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for listening. And if you are listening to us, make sure you leave us a five-star review on the respective platform that you're listening to us on. And if you're watching us on Spotify, thank you. Make sure you let us know down below what you thought of this episode. Natalie, where can everyone find us? Yes, you can find us on YouTube, on TikTok, and on Instagram. Giorgio goes under Giorgio Says on all these platforms and I go under Femmes Tarot. So please make sure that you follow us over there as well because there's a lot of content that we roll out every week. And if you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, make sure you get subscribed and hit that notification bell so you don't miss when we upload our new episode, which will be once a week. And if you want to email us with your questions, what kind of questions do you want us to ask future guests that are going to be coming on this podcast? And you make sure that you follow us because we have a long list of incredible content creators that will be joining this podcast in the very, very near future. So please email us at creatingthecreatorpod at gmail.com. Perfect. And until the next episode, you guys, Natalie and myself will talk to you on the next episode. Bye. Till next time. Bye.